a pretty good job of imagining myself at center court at Wimbledon, but what about music? I love music. Of course, I'm obviously no drummer. But you know, I feel this physical urge to respond to music, and I think most of us do. Whether you're tone deaf or you have two left feet, it's pretty hard to sit still when there's a strong rhythm. Question is, do we all process music the same way, or do some of us have a stronger urge to bust a move? It's only one way to find out. So we've got two things lined up for you today. First, Can music or simple rhythms help initiate movement for those with mobility issues? University of Western Ontario researcher Jessica Gron thinks so, and she has a test that should prove that. We'll just be playing you little clips of music. And what we're expecting to see is your auditory cortex, the part of the brain that responds to sound, that should light up. But what we also expect to see is the areas of your brain that are responsible for controlling movement to light up as well. And this is something that seems to be important in our processing of music, that it activates these motor centers. To get a good look at my brain cells in action, they need me to slide into a 7 Tesla MR. This is some machine. At 27 and a half tons, it's the same weight as five full-grown African elephants. And because it's more than twice as powerful as the 3T machine I was just in, it produces extremely high-res images. Well, 7T has changed the game because it has such a, a great SNR, signal-to-noise ratio, that allows you really good spatial resolution. The resolution is much higher than with a three Tesla machine. And in fact, most hospital scanners are only one and a half Tesla. So we're actually looking uh, in much greater detail in these brain areas than you might if you were going to have an MRI on your brain in hospital. Do it interleaved, and that is descending. So right there, those are the slices through Jay's brain that we'll be collecting data from. The slices are cross sections or still images of my brain that when strung together, create a moving picture. The fewer the images, the higher the resolution. Since Jessica wants to study various areas of my brain, she's decided on 29 slices. Okay, Jay, here we go. Hey, this isn't bad. Of course, I can't tap my toes or move a muscle. But I guess that's the idea. What we expect to see, first of all, and not surprisingly, are the auditory areas. But what we're also expecting to see are areas of the brain that are normally involved in controlling movement and making sure our movements are accurate. The second part of my task is not nearly as relaxing. OK, are we ready to start the rhythm experiment? Yep. OK, here we go. Jessica's sending me three basic stripped-down rhythmic patterns. My task is to make a mental note when one of the patterns doesn't match. It's a little tedious, but I do like challenges. OK, we're done. I'm going to go get them. Great. You OK? Not busy or anything? Um, I don't think so. Good. No, I'm fine. Good. Well, I am a little dizzy, but not much. So what was really weird about the rhythm thing was that I was getting angry at them. And here's why. So you'd hear the first two, and you could, I generally would listen to the first half, the first time around, then I'd get that, and then I'd listen carefully the second half, so I was totally ready. And if it started differently, I'd say, what, you're trying to fool me? I know that's different. Uh, and I really had this weird kind of dialogue going on in my mind. OK, let's see if they can fool me this time. And there were about, I wish I could remember which ones, but there were about three or four where I wasn't really sure. So it'll be interesting to see if that shows up any differently. It was, it was fun, actually. Fun, yep, but now I'm anxious to see how I did. Well, we've got brain activity. That's a good Which first step. Which is reassuring, step. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, so far, it's been a pretty successful journey as we tour my body from the inside out. Turns out I'm pretty good at swallowing a camera. I see it. You're in upper esophagus. And um, I'm going to pump in a little bit of air and try to open up that upper esophagus so we can see more. I better learn to stand up straighter before my neck gets worse. So that disc has protruded back and actually changed the thickness or the width of that fluid on the front. So whenever you see me on camera from now on, I'm going to be like this.
and I might not be the tennis player I thought I was. Now I get to find out if I have any rhythm. A 7 Tesla MR was my concert hall as researcher Jessica Grand teased my brain with classical music, and then she wanted to see how I reacted to basic rhythms. Now, the moment of truth. So Jessica, you have crunched the data. What have we got? Well, we've got brain activity. That's a good step. Which first is reassuring, step. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the first picture we've got here is looking at you from the side. So again, there's your, your nose up there. And the first thing we can see, uh, the most prominent activation is in the listening areas of the brain, the auditory cortex. And that, we get a really robust Big swathe. splotch of activity we there. We do. Yeah. This is my brain during the classical music test. The bright orange spots just above my ears are the auditory cortex. It's a part of the brain that analyzes complex pitch information and multiple chord changes. As you can see, my auditory cortexes, they were on that day. Okay, now that is just rhythm. No melody, no harmonics, no timbre, and yet rhythm seems to be the thing that we respond to the most. So in your second task, you don't get your nice, rich chords. You now just get... Um, and so this is the response that we got when you were just listening to those rhythms. So here again is your auditory cortex, and you can see that response is actually a lot smaller. What we see here are parts of your motor system responding. So we don't see the part that's actually responsible for making movements, for executing the movement. That didn't uh, respond, which is not surprising because you were staying very still. So the motor areas of my brain were completely engaged in reacting to the simple rhythms. It would have been easy for me to tap my toes or snap my fingers to the beat. So that suggests to me that you are locking into the rhythm and the timing, um, particularly probably the beat. That seems to be the part of music that really engages the motor system. Is that's what we move to normally when we're dancing, is the beat and the rhythm. So rhythm is, uh, in a way, more important than the notes and the harmonies and the pitches of those notes? Well, in terms of um, getting your motor system engaged, it yeah. seems to be, yep. So, how would you like to apply this knowledge? There's some evidence that, for example, children with dyslexia might have poor beat perception. So we're hoping that we can actually start to develop interventions where we can use music as a much more fun and enjoyable activity to try and improve some of the systems that are, that are maybe going wrong in, in language disorders. I would like MRI show why the Beatles' mono recordings are actually better than the Beatles' <laughs> stereo recordings. Me too. I would think that would make me a little more money than I'm making right now. <laughs>